So, uh, so uh, thank you very much, uh, dear eminent speakers from uh, the elite panel of discussions, dear viewers who are watching us live, and dear viewers who will be watching us later. Uh, very good afternoon to you, all of you. And I'm also aware that there would be a quite a lot of uh, Japanese viewers now or in the future. For the Japanese viewers, uh, konnichiwa. Session ni go sanka itadaki makotoni arigato gozaimasta. So I am Barrister Omar H. Khan. I am the head of Chambers of Legal Counsel. So uh, uh, I, I welcome you all again this uh, very important day and the celebration of Intellectual Property Day 2021. And why I say it's a very important day, because I believe, of course, uh, throughout the discussion, it will, uh, it will also transpire that uh, it, is, it is a very resourceful day and the uh, properties that we own uh, and the properties that we see, uh, we might look into differently after the discussion, or at least the viewers might look into the property aspect very differently after the discussion of today. So uh, today we will be uh, dividing the session into two parts. In the first part, uh, a very brief part, we will be launching a, a booklet, uh, which is uh, first of the publication from the Quest series of Legal Counsel. It's a booklet on intellectual property rights. And in the second part, of course, we will be uh, discussing within this very elite panel of discussions regarding intellectual property and different aspects of it. This year's the Intellectual Property World Intellectual Property Day's theme is uh, IP and SME, taking your ideas to market. And we all know that in the modern era, uh, the new ideas and innovations are being done not only every day, I would say in every second. And the value of the intellectual property uh, a long time back outweighs the value of the tangible assets that we have. As per a very recent survey of uh, S&P 500, which evaluates the top 500 corporations in the United States, they say that in 2020, the uh, IP value of top 500 US companies uh, accorded for 90% of the total asset value. And only 10% of the asset value uh, are for the land, the machinery, the factory, and so on and so forth that we generally think are the real properties. So with the technological advances, we also hope that in Bangladesh too, uh, the, uh, we will be soon seeing a situation where the IP will boom and our valuation and our thought and uh, you know, thought process about property will also change. Particularly when we are at the verge of uh, graduating to a developing country from an LDC, it is also very important that we look into the issue very carefully and we meet the uh, related and associated challenges and we are prepared for that. So with that note, I warmly welcome His Excellency, uh, Ms. Winnie Estrup Peterson, Ambassador of Denmark. I welcome Mr. Said Al Almas Kabir, President of BASIS, Ms. Uh, Nadia Samdani, President of uh, Samdani Out Foundation, uh, Mr. Tari Naman, President of Nordic Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, Ms. Monju N. Rai, who has joined us from Mumbai, who is the general counsel from Asia Pacific of Western Union. Uh, Mr. Sayyid uh, Gausal Alam Shaun, uh, who is the country head of Grey Advertising Limited. And uh, Mr. Yuji Ando, country representative of Jetro. And uh, of course, not, not last but not the least, Ms. Nabila Jahan uh, Jabin Khan, category head of Unilever Bangladesh Limited. Uh, to this uh, event. And from our side, uh, along with me, I have uh, my colleague, uh, Barrister Mushfik M. Rizvi, who is the partner development of Legal Counsel, and Barrister Rabia Jahan Firoz, who is the chief executive uh, lawyer for uh, Legal Counsel. So with this note, I would like to invite first uh, uh, Barrister uh, Rabia Jahan Firoz to give us a brief about Legal Counsel and uh, uh, the Quest publication series, Rabia. Sure, sure. Thank you, am I audible properly? Okay, so thank you very much, uh, Barrister Omar H. Khan for allow allowing me to say a few words about legal counsel. Ladies and gentlemen, 
A very warm welcome and the warmest regards to you all. I am, as uh, I've been already introduced, Barrister Rabia Jahan Chief Executive Lawyer of Legal Counsel. Legal Counsel is one of the leading law chambers of Bangladesh and was founded in the year 2009. Um, located at the heart of Dhaka City, we take pride in saying that our clients and our professional acquaintances recognize um, four principal features that make a legal counsel distinct, uh, being efficiency, of course, of course, reliability, um, punctuality, and our balanced and just approach to uh, delivering legal services. We are a, full, a service corporate law firm with strongholds in both legal advisory services and court proceedings, and are constantly in pursuit to maintaining a level of professionalism. Our clients come from a wide variety of sectors. Um, their headquarters being located in over 26 countries across six continents. Um, we have allied um, law firms in 16 um, countries of the world. So since its, in its inception, Legal Council always believed in empowering people. And we all know that knowledge is power. And therefore, you know, proper empowerment is only possible through acquiring um, relevant knowledge and information. And so as a part of legal counsel's um, pro bono initiative and commitment, uh, our um, and our continuing effort to disseminate uh, relevant knowledge to our clients and other people, legal counsel has been pioneer in, um, you know, doing many in innovative things and coming up with new ideas. You know, these two we call legal innovation and are in fact our IP. I'm thrilled to say that the IP booklet to be launched today is actually the first uh, from the newly commenced series of publication of legal counsel called the Quest Publication Series. Uh, we believe that this booklet shall provide valuable um, insight to readers and uh, enrich their knowledge in core and you know important aspects of IP. Uh, we hope that this series quest, as we call it, will gain its true momentum through your um, valuable feedback and continuing support. And we will be able to come up with more publications on different topics um, over the years. Uh, I hope you will enjoy today's launch and subsequent reading of this booklet. And thank you once again. Thank you very much, Rabia, for uh, giving us the insight about uh, the, the booklet. So uh, uh, if I may take the opportunity to give you a glimpse about the booklet. So Kaushar, if you can share the screen and if you can have a, a quick look of the booklet itself. Also, if you can share the screen. So by the time the screen is shared, uh, I can, I can, as, as Rabia was saying, it is a booklet on IPR. So we have very, uh, you know, in a very simple and plain language without using any legal jargon, which is a, you know, always a, always a difficulty for the readers to understand and get held, hold of what is what. So we have used very plain and simple language to, to make a, you know, booklet is not a book. So the size is also quite something interesting. And now you can see the uh, cover cover page. So you see, it's, it's also a thought provoking cover page. It's, it's, it's quite uh, different. And I believe that with this kind of cover page, if, if somebody sees this book, it will attract somebody to touch it and see what is inside. So if we go inside uh, and if we can go uh, to the table of content part, uh, you would see that we have talked about different aspects of uh, IP, uh, including copyright. Cause on next page, uh, yeah, copyright, trademark, patent, uh, geographical indicators. Uh, and then we talked about uh, uh, different other aspects, for example, the valuation. So if, if, as, as you're taking through, you see, we have also used, uh, 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 you know, visual aspects when we are talking about, for example, trademarks, so that a reader can easily understand what is being said 
and then uh, coupled with these uh, photos, they will understand what is what. And and then this is how Kausar, please proceed. Uh, so you have Kausar, please continue to proceed. Kausar, Agiya Jan, please. Uh, so, uh, and, and in the later part, we have also talked about the valuation method, uh, how, why we shall value and how we shall do the valuation of IP. We have also talked about uh, uh, a need for a strategy, uh, uh, important aspect of strategizing the IP in an organization, why we shall have an IP strategy in every organization. We also talked about the alternative dispute resolution method, uh, ADR. Uh, in 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 terms of resolving dispute in relation to IP, so that we can avoid uh, going to the court, and then we have uh, given a conclusion. So with that note, uh, uh, I think we we would be ready uh, already to circulate it. Uh, the soft copy it is already uh, you know uh, uploaded in our website. So we will be sending this web link to as many number of recipients as possible. So this will be available after the launching to the whole world and then we would be also having these uh, hard copies uh, within a limited number of editions which we will keep uh, within ourselves and we would be prepared to uh, you know distribute it whoever actually aspire to read a booklet as a hard copy format so i would with that note i would request uh, her excellency uh, the ambassador of denmark just to uh, formally launch the booklet Or maybe a little bit of technical glitch. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, Her Excellency, you if you me? can formally, formally launch, formally declare the launch of the booklet. Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to give a few more words on that, but uh, I hereby uh, declare the booklet on intellectual property uh, launched. Uh, today on Intellectual Property Rights International Day. And I cut the red ribbon. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so back to you. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Her Excellency. So the first part of the session is uh, over. So now we will go to the most interesting part uh, of, of the discussion. And we have a very uh, rich panel of discussions. And when we were circulating the flyer of, of today's session, I was being uh, knocked and communicated by a lot of our friends and, and, and colleagues from different corners. And they said that they're quite keenly waiting for the discussion by seeing all of your faces. They expect that we will have a very uh, lively discussion. So on that note, I would actually like to start with uh, uh, Mr. Said Almas Kabir, the president of BASIS. Uh, he is uh, not only the president of BASIS, I would say, he is a very, a very uh, enthusiastic president. And I can see that he is he's, he's doing all that is possible and all that is not even very easily possible to take uh, this software industry and IT industry to a different level. And uh, oh, apart from the, uh, you know, holding the post of uh, basis is also the chairperson of uh, Metronet, which is also quite popular uh, internet service provider in the town. So on that note, uh, Mr. Sayed Almas Kobir, if I may ask you that if you can shed some light on the current prevailing situation of patenting the innovating ideas and also copywriting the uh, creative works within the ICT sector. And if you see any gap, uh, your suggestions, how we can overcome those gaps. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, my best wishes and congratulations to you and to the legal counsel um, about for the book. The, for the booklet. I'm sure that booklet will be very much beneficial for everybody, um, especially in the, in the world of business, where we know that the value of, uh, or the, rather the importance of intellectual property is very, very 
uh, that uh, the ICT industry uh, worldwide, the top companies, actually not only ICT industry, if you, if you just talk about the top companies in the world, you know, like Amazon or Google or, or Microsoft or IBM, Oracle, all of these companies, they thrive on their uh, intellectual property, the value of their intellectual property. So there's no doubt that it is very, very important for any business. And especially for the ICT business, um, it, is, uh, it is actually, uh, I would say, valuable. The problem that I see in Bangladesh is exactly what I have just said. People do not realize this. Um, unfortunately, who are in the ICT business, who are um, you know making software or, or IT enabled services, uh, they do not realize that they need to protect their IP. Um, maybe uh, as a nation, uh, we Bengalis are very much you know uh, you know open minded, uh, or, but I don't know. But we really need to protect this property of ours. Just like we, uh, you know, safeguard our our money, our other other valuables, uh, we need to safeguard this as well. Uh, we hear a lot of time complaints that uh, people have stolen. I mean, employees or ex-employees have stolen the software code, the source code. Uh, they have uh, gone to another another place and they have sold that source code, or they have opened their own companies and selling the source code. So. These kind of complaints we hear actually very, very often. But the problem is that, as I, as I was saying, that the lack of awareness is still there. We from Basis, we are trying to, as you know very well, that we have created a Basis IP cell. And every month we have at least one session uh, where we invite uh, our member companies who are into software and, and uh, the providing IT services to come and to learn, um, you know how to protect these their their uh, intellectual property, but I think this must be done from the government in a much more bigger scale. Um, as you know very well, that the copyright office is actually now separate from the patent and the registered trademark office. I mean, it's under two different ministries. So I first step, I think it should be they all should be in the, in the same um, you know under the same ministry or under the same uh, agency, so that is that that should be the first step I, I would uh, recommend. Um, another thing is that um, the the lack of understanding of patent, you know, especially in the ICT arena, uh, patent is very very important. Of course, copyright uh, also, but patent is very very important because uh, you know a lot of technology are there. Many companies they come up with very innovative technologies. If they cannot patent it, they won't be able to protect it, not only in Bangladesh, but also worldwide. But problem is that our patent office, uh, if you apply for a patent, they take a long time, uh, I, I would say not months, but years to you know respond even. So that has to be looked into. Uh, I would um, actually, uh, through this program, I would um, like to, draw the attention of the relevant agencies, the government ministries, that they must um, you know, improvise and expedite on this. Um, we hardly have any, any patent in Bangladesh in software. As far as I know, there are many applications though, but except for the Bijoy keyboard, the Bang Bangla keyboard, I don't think any patent uh, has been granted. You can, you know, you, you, can, you will know more about this. Uh, copyright, yes, uh, we have several copyrights. We have several trademarks, service marks also. Um, I would also uh, uh, like to mention this, that because as you were mentioning in the, in the booklet that you have uh, some guidelines towards um, IP valuation, there is no guideline from the government, no approved guideline from the government about IP valuation. So if I have a software, um, there, there is no way to assess its value. So, and that uh, becomes a very big obstacle when the ICT companies go, they go to a bank and ask for loan. When the bank asks for um, a collateral, as for a security, uh, and these IT companies, they do not have, uh, you know, land or a capital machinery uh, as, as a tangible machinery 
uh, as uh, to give as a collateral. All they have, all the asset is actually the intellectual property in their brain or in their hard disk. And there is no uh, IP valuation guideline. And that is why they cannot show that as an asset and they cannot, banks also cannot accept that as a, uh, accept that co source code as a, you know, collateral. So that must be, I would say, uh, that the IP guideline has to be there, has to be in place. And uh, another thing that I would say that the copyright and the trademark, um, again, many people, they think that this is a very um, difficult pros procedure. They, many people, they think it's a very expensive procedure. But again, I would say uh, may, may, maybe through programs like this, uh, this information must be disseminated. We are trying, as I said, from basis. And also, if Bangladesh can uh, be a signatory in the Ma Madrid uh, protocol, the Madrid protocol, as you know very well, that if you if you apply through the Madrid protocol, you can automatically get the copyright uh, uh, in, in a number of countries, a number of regions. So that can also be a very, very uh, for industry, not only the ICT industry, but all other industries as well. So I believe... These are the that, that this is the current situation right now, and uh, uh, as I said, uh, some as I as I mentioned some recommendations. I would really love that um, uh, the, our relevant ministries, especially the Ministry of Industry and the Ministry of Cultural Affairs, they they realize this uh, problem, and they um, you know take these steps to mitigate these uh, shortcomings. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, dear uh, Mr. Sayyad al uh, These are very important information, and we have taken note. Honestly speaking, after the webinar, unlike most of the webinars that finishes uh, without any uh, takeaway from the webinar, we are taking all notes, and we would be pursuing the contents and suggestions with the relevant authorities uh, af after we finish. So with that note, I would like to uh, now go to Ms. Nadia Samdani. Uh, the president of Samdani Foundation. Uh, of course, uh, those who know uh, about Bangladeshi art and those who are art lovers, particularly, they are all aware of what Nadia and her foundation uh, has been doing for, for the promotion of arts, not only in Bangladesh, but around the world. And uh, I, I believe there is nobody here who would not know the Dhaka Art Summit, uh, which, which has been uh, you know tremendous success and which has also helped uh, enormously in branding Bangladesh. So with that note, uh, I would like to ask uh, to uh, Nadia, uh, as, as you are very much uh, you know, into these uh, arts and you have uh, you know, visited uh, the world and seen how the art and the, the, the intellectual aspect of the arts, different types of arts, I didn't only mean the painting or sculptures, it also includes the music and other forms of art, how they are protecting this. So my question to you is that if you can assess the prevailing circumstances, uh, particularly in relation to prevailing artworks in Bangladesh, and if you see that there is a gap between your experience with the Western world, if there's a gap between the Western world's experience and our experience, what would be your suggestion in, in bridging the gap? Nadia. Thank you, Barrister Omar, for the generous introduction. Um, I'm very happy to be here, and congratulations on uh, the launch of the IP booklet. Um, in terms of art, it's it's a little difficult and it's a little different. And I would and I'm speaking in terms in generally when it comes to artworks. For example, worldwide. Um, it is a big problem and it's a big problem that everybody is facing. Like, for example, I can give you a small example, like one of the big um, brand names, like a designer brand name, which we all know, I'm not going to mention the name here, has um, in 2019 has taken um, uh, a Pakistani artist's work and made it into their window display. And when the artist saw that, he approached and he said that, you know, it is my work. Why is it on your window display without my permission or it hasn't been bought? And then they're like, you know, so it went back and forth. But at the end, nothing actually happened. Because when you're fighting with a big giant, 
and you're an artist, you get stuck. Yes, of course, you can fight for your intellectual property, but you, but for an artist, you get stuck with all the legal fees and the endless, um, the time consuming. What happens at the end of the day? You give up, and you're like, okay, fine. You know, you give up. So, you know, I think in terms of art, it is very difficult because, you know, artists, they're always inspired one, uh, you know, uh, inspired from each other. And from one artwork to another art, you're inspired. But I think in terms of photography, it is more appropriate. Um, in terms of photography, like, for example, it, you know, we don't give photo credit or we don't give any courtesy. Or, you know, for example, we we see something of the internet and we're using it. And who the artist is, who the photographer is, it's their right. Are the multiple times that we're using a photograph, are they getting any royalty for it? No. Do we even know who the photographer is? Do we care who the photographer is? Is no. So I think, you know, slowly, I mean, this needs to be changed. We need to give photo credit some kind of courtesy of whoever has taken the picture because it is their intellectual property it is not your property another example is a lot of cases in terms of artwork or anything like say we see an image of a uh, an image on the internet and we take it out and we print it and we put it on our t-shirt and then if we sell the t-shirt how does that work it's very difficult so it's so it's complicated on many levels um i think um, it's it's a very very big topic in terms of when it comes to the artistic side and also a, a couple of months ago i was doing this research on the bangladesh music industry and um, i spoke to a lot of musicians and i was shocked to hear that you know every time in bangladesh when a, mu a, 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 a song or a music video or it's played on the radio or a music channel or anything, they don't get any royalty. It is more like, you know, I am playing your music. It is, you know, it's, you know, you're lucky. Not like, you know, okay, this is your, this is your creation. I am respecting it. And this is the amount of money you're getting or this is the support you're getting or something or some royalty. So we don't have that. So it's kind of like what happens to musicians? What happens to artists like that? So, you know, and then if one artist say raises a, a question that, okay, you cannot use my intellectual property without giving me credit or without giving me some kind of recognition or some kind of fees, um, then he'll be dropped. So does that, person want to be alone and be lost like that and forgotten or do you go with the flow so i think it is it is very complicated but slowly slowly i think it is developing like for example youtube you know if something's on youtube you're getting royalty but in terms of art photography i think there needs to be some kind of policy that everybody is aware of that these are the things you can do or you can't do. And there, of course, there should be laws, but you know, would would a young artist or a you know someone who cannot afford like legal fees or to fight with a bigger um, uh, bigger business house, how how does it work? So I think the awareness needs to be there. I think we need to honor each other's um, intellectual rights i think awareness like for example like today it's um you know this um international um ip day and we hadn't even talked i didn't even know about this day 10 years ago and i think this is where the awareness is building that i am invited here we are invited here we can spread the word and share um these things with each other so we're aware so i think it's a start and um, we need to support um, our own fields um, and so that we're all protected in some way. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Nadia Samzani, for your uh, you know, uh, interesting and uh, thought-provoking words. Uh, so with this note, I would like to uh, go to uh, Ms. Manju N. Rai.
Uh, Manjuan Rai, as I said, is the uh, Assistant General Counsel for Western Union in the Asia Pacific region. And uh, I also have the opportunity to work with her in, on, on time to time. And I have seen her you know, passion for work and the, the way she also gets the work done from different jurisdictions in Asia Pacific. And of course, you know that Western Union is one of the top 100 bands uh, almost, I think, for last uh, 20 years. And they are always uh, within the top 100 bands in the world. So having said that, we are also not aware of any, you know, uh, sizable dispute uh, revolving around Western Union brand. So they must have been doing something very strategic uh, in terms of, you know, maintaining their brand value around the world for such a long time without having any kind of negative, you know, uh, uh, advertisement or a propaganda or a dispute. So on that note, I would like to ask uh, Ms. Manju, that how do you actually maintain such a strong brand image for such a long time globally? Thanks, Barrister Omar. And first of all, let me congratulate you and the team for the launch of this booklet on, on IPR on the World IP Day. Uh, the booklet, you know, I haven't been able to go through it. I'll definitely have a look at it. But it definitely the, the, the glimpse that you showed us, it seems quite simple, easy to understand. And I'm sure will be helpful to many stakeholders, including SMEs. And I know that this year the spotlight is on SMEs. Uh, by understanding the IPR rights, I know that they can build a stronger, competitive and resilient business. So uh, congratulations once again. Good afternoon, everyone. And I, I'm just so excited to be here and with this impressive group. Thank you, uh, Barrister Mar, for having me here. Uh, I think I'll just take a few minutes to probably introduce myself, I do, although uh, Omar, you know, you very <laughs> graciously introduced me, but my name is uh, Manju Rai. I'm part of the Western Union Global Team. My responsibilities include uh, regulatory, licensing, uh, public policy and business legal for the Asia Pacific region. Um, and, and just to talk about Western Union, you know, uh, we as a brand are about 170 years old. And I'm very proud to say that the bank brand recollect is quite high. When it comes to money transfer services, fortunately, our customers do. Not only our customers, globally, we do uh, enjoy a very high brand recognition. It wasn't easy. But yes, over a period of time, you know, the, the services that we have been able to offer to our customers, I think that itself has been uh, magnificent. You know, we are a publicly traded company based out of Colorado, USA. Uh, we, uh, we are a global leader in cross-border currency movement. And, uh, you know, we try to service all segments of customers, whether it's financial institutions, individuals, SMEs, NGOs. And we are present in more than 200 countries and territories. So we have about 550,000 agent locations that, that are the touch points that we offer to our customers in case they want to deal with us physically. We also have a magnificent digital, digital presence, including our businesses in Bangladesh, which is, I think, Bangladesh ranks almost sixth or seventh as far as inbound remittances are concerned. And it's a very, very key market for us. So thanks very much. I know with Barrister Omar, we've had some very interesting discussions in Bangladesh, but that is a very a country that's very close to Western Union's heart. So thanks very much. So just to come back to your question that how do we deal with IPR? And uh, I can tell you that our company does invest or spend a lot on IPR related issues. And the key here is awareness. We believe that our the guardians of the companies are our employees. And that's where we spend a lot of time in educating them. You know, we have an IP policy and our employees are trained regularly on the various do's and don'ts. We have guardrails. And just like how you had that uh, booklet, you know, it really impressed me, as I said, that just could glance through it. But the idea is to keep it simple, to give examples and to bring awareness. And that's where I think I would uh, relate to uh, my colleagues, I think, on the fellow panelists, uh, especially uh, President Basis and uh, uh, Madam Samdani, who also brought in, interestingly, the point of awareness. And that's what is key. I, I totally resonate and agree that, you know, the processes and uh, stakeholders have to be informed about the importance of IPR. And the best way to do that is to educate and give examples and make them 
know that how interesting or how important this asset is for them for their business for their growth so i think i totally resonate and totally agree with that so the way that we deal with ipr issues especially in western union is that you know we have global ip experts who along with the regional business legal teams work on various aspects whether it's registration whether it's searches whether it's mna deals whether it's enforcement or litigation or you know we have very accurate clauses in all our contracts and as you know western union works with a huge a uh, several number of agents globally so from that perspective the complexity is even more so we do have robust clauses in place we have awareness amongst employees and of course we also have hotline channels that in case of doubts people can reach us and we can clarify to them so that you know there is no bottleneck or things don't stop so uh, just to summarize i believe that knowledge and understanding on this topic among stakeholders is critical you know with the increase of trade and commerce companies especially having global aspirations an awareness of ipr is a condition precedent so on that note i thank you very much uh, barrister mar for having me in and uh, i'm looking forward to the uh, interesting discussions amongst the other panelists so over to you omar thank you very much thank you manju thank you very much i think i think you have you have you have highlighted the very important aspect of you know spending money and uh, not only spending money spending money strategically with the policy with the strategy to actually maintain a very high uh, uh, brand value over 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 a century so thank you manju thank you very much so i would like to move to uh, mr uh, uh, uji ando uh andosan uh, we we know that uh, uh, in bangladesh there are a good number of japanese organization for quite a long time and we are also expecting that in the coming years uh, in in 5 years time we are expecting a lot of other japanese investment to come in bangladesh being the trade body being the body under the ministry of commerce of japanese government uh, you are always uh, aware and you are always contacted by the japanese organizations about their issues their legal issues their problems and other other so on and so forth so with your practical experience that you have uh, uh throughout the years working in jetro uh, can you please also uh, share how frequently you are actually faced with ip related questions from the japanese companies and what kind of issues are they actually facing that you are aware of andosan <laughs> Thank you very much, Omar Bhai. And first, I'm Bangladesh Bori. First, I'm asking you to come to the conference and talk to me about this. And I'm excited to have the IP booklet that launch for you to open on the chat. Thank you, Omar Bhai. Thank you very much. So again, I'd like to congratulate uh, on the launching the uh, IP booklet on uh, International uh, IP Day. Uh, as the Mr. Omar uh, introduced. Uh, we Jetro uh, are, are the uh, official trade and investment the promotion agency uh, under the Japanese government, and uh, we are facilitating trade and investment uh, from the Japanese companies uh, to Bangladesh. And uh, we Jetro uh, counts 321 uh, Japanese companies uh, as of now, and uh, the number of the Japanese companies uh, has increased by. Uh, Around four times uh, in last decade, and uh, many Japanese companies are showing great interest uh, in doing business in in Bangladesh uh, because the uh, the economy is booming and uh, population uh, is very huge and uh, uh, per capita income is growing rapidly. So uh, we are getting a lot of uh, inquiries uh, about the uh, domestic market situation. Uh, especially about the uh, uh, consumer goods and uh, machineries uh, to approach uh, this market uh, from the Japanese companies. And uh, uh, as everyone um, uh, discussing about the awareness, uh, uh, as for the Japanese companies, uh, uh, awareness of IPR uh, is really, really high. And uh, some Japanese companies are watching the intellectual property the issues uh, from India, the subsidiaries from in India. And our uh, Jutro uh, New Delhi office uh, in India uh, organizes a uh, working group for uh, IR, uh, IPR issue. And uh, this, this working group uh, consists of the uh, big Japanese companies uh, like Honda, 
uh, Canon and Panasonic and uh, some Japanese uh, law firms. And uh, this working group uh, is basically uh, studying the uh, IP issues uh, in India, uh, but they also uh, cover uh, Bangladesh uh, as uh, their interest uh, in Bangladesh markets is really, really huge. And uh, actually they have done a research and release a report uh, on IP uh, in Japanese language last year. Uh, we can understand how uh, IP uh, issues are really important for Japanese companies uh, to uh, approach this market. And especially uh, as one of the uh, important challenges and issues uh, for Japanese companies, uh, some Japanese companies are, are suffering from uh, uh, counterfeit products and uh, struggling uh, how to remove the fake products from the market. The, there are a lot of reasons why uh, counterfeit products are uh, spreading uh, in uh, Bangladesh market. Uh, for example, uh, high import, import, import tax and uh, uh, proper uh, enforcement of monitoring and raid in, in market uh, 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 challenges for uh, dealing with the uh, uh, fake products in Bangladesh. So we get the more inquiries from the Japanese companies uh, about the uh, IPR issues uh, year by year. Uh, also, the patent issue uh, is really spotlighted by Japanese companies because uh, Japanese companies are expanding their uh, businesses in Bangladesh. As far as I know, the, the number of patent applications uh, from Japanese companies to uh, Department of Patents, uh, Designs and Trademarks, uh, DPDT, uh, is 27 uh, in 2015 and uh, 28 uh, in 2016. Uh, in both years, the applications from Japanese companies uh, account for around 10% uh, in, in total in Bangladesh. I believe uh, in the near future, uh, this rate uh, we increase uh, because more Japanese companies uh, will operate uh, here in Bangladesh. So actually, in this regard, uh, this booklet will bring us a lot of the ideas uh, on IP and help us to deal with uh, challenges uh, on IPR issue. So by taking this opportunity, uh, we just would like to request legal counsel to support the, the Japanese companies uh, on uh, IPR issues. So I would expect, I would expect many uh, business of people uh, will utilize the, this booklet. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Andersan, uh, for your uh, very insightful discussion with practical uh, market situation particularly with the Japanese companies in Bangladesh. And uh, certainly we will be very privileged and glad to be uh, of any kind of assistance if we can be. Uh, thank you, Andusan. Uh, I would like to now move to uh, Mr. Uh, Tari Naman. Uh, Mr. Tari Naman is the newly elected president of Nordic Chamber of Commerce and Industries. And to the best of my knowledge, it will be Mr. Aman's first uh, external appearance as a president of NCCI. Uh, apart from uh, being the president of NCCI, he is also the group managing director of Aman Group, which is, uh, I'm not sure if, if the largest or if not the largest, one of the largest spinning mills uh, of, of Bangladesh. And uh, also, you know, glorifying the Bangladeshi uh, products uh, around the world. So uh, with that note, uh, Mr. Tarin Aman, uh, being the president of uh, NCCI, uh, your membership includes a lot of Nordic companies. And we all are aware that the Nordic companies most of the time lead the world in innovation and technological development and corporate governance with all these high key things that we can talk on or talk about. So uh, how do you see that uh, uh, as the president of NCCI, uh, how Bangladeshi businesses and Bangladeshi uh, business houses can be benefited uh, with the experiences from the Nordic innovations. Mr. Uh, thank you, uh, Barrister Omar, for your very kind and uh, generous introduction. Uh, let me start off by congratulating you, uh, Legal Counsel, on the launching of the booklet of IP. Uh, this is a very interesting and very uh, would be a very knowledgeable uh, resource for many of the business entrepreneurs. And uh, on, at the same time, on behalf of Nordic Chamber of Commerce and Industries, 
I would like to uh, thank you for inviting us to this webinar. Uh, before I dive into your question, I would like to speak a little bit about uh, what Nordic Chamber of Commerce and Industry does. NCCI has been uh, catering to the Nordic businesses operating in Bangladesh. Our chamber uh, is endorsed and works closely with the three Nordic embassies. Our goal is to address global and company specific uh, agendas to concerned authorities and promote ease of doing business and also encourage Nordic companies to invest and expand operations in Bangladesh. Now, as you know, Nordic countries are leading in the way of innovation. Uh, they have created an ecosystem which supports and scales growth uh, with strong emphasis on sustainability development goals and climate change actions. So they have developed an environment where industrial and artistic innovations are protected and are encouraged to thrive. So many Nordic companies such as H&M, IKEA, ABB, Scotic Solar, they're investing heavily in R&D and coming up with innovation, innovative solutions. Uh, if, I would, if I may throw a few numbers at you, uh, Barrister Omar, in 2019, uh, the Nordic region as a whole, uh, they have created a value of 80.1 billion euro and that was largely dependent on just copyrights and at the same time in 2019 the nordic region as a whole they have created a value of 182.3 billion euros uh, which was uh, largely dependent on uh, patents so this this is this is a huge area that is being uh, not tapped in bangladesh i would say so intellectual property rights have helped organization create employment, build more competent labor force, and also encourage entrepreneurs to innovate and solve uh, many local and uh, national issues. So the Bangladesh does have a tremendous potential in this area. As we all know, we have a big population of young entrepreneurs and innovators who would be contributing to the economy, and uh, they would be contributing through innovation not to just solve local and domestic and national issues, but also to compete in the global world. So we have to be kind of ready uh, to provide them with the support uh, they need and encourage them to grow. So what do we need in Bangladesh for that to happen right now? We need to have a very agile and effective policy. So strong intellectual property protection rights is, is a necessity, it's a must. So innovations, trade secrets, they have to be very well protected by law. And in addition to that, we have to encourage startup incubators so that entrepreneurs can get the much needed support and the protection they need to grow at an early stage. So as we know that uh, Sweden has become the tech startup capital of Europe. So I strongly feel that Bangladesh also can follow the same footstep and tap into the potential uh, of growing and contributing to the economy through IP. Uh, so we, I strongly feel that this is something that needs to be talked about uh, more frequently. And in addition to that, you know, I would like to congratulate uh, Legal Counsel again to take this initiative. This is a topic that we want to talk about. Uh, I know personally on my case, we deal with this issue every time because we innovate new yarns for my uh, business. And there is absolutely no way we can protect our trade secrets. So that, that becomes a big issue because we cannot brand it, we cannot label it, we cannot own it, even though we're innovating it. So I strongly feel that your booklet will give a guideline to, uh, to go about it in the right direction. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Tarin Aman, for sharing uh, uh, how we can also gain something from the Nordic experiences and what, in, what is happening there in one of the most developed part of the world. Uh, thank you very much. So I would like to now uh, move to Amesa Nabila J. Khan. Uh, uh, she is the co uh, co category head of uh, Unilever Bangladesh Limited. And uh, she is particularly dealing with two of these brands that uh, I think there is very few people in the modern world who, who don't know. Uh, one is Lux, the other is Lifebuoy. Uh, honestly speaking, just before we started this program, I washed my hands with Lifebuoy and then set uh, for this discussion. So she has been also the you know key person in Unilever in dealing with, particularly in these two brands, while dealing with other brands as a whole. So uh, of course, Unilever uh, does not require a lot of uh, introduction. We are aware of a lot of brands, uh, especially 
in the SMCG, the, the, the consumer products, a lot of brands we are aware of, we know. So, so Unilever actually owns a lot of uh, strong brands around the world. So uh, my question would be quite uh, straightforward to you, Nabila. How important is IP for Unilever? And uh, what are the common issues that you actually face uh, in terms of IP in your company? Nabila, to you. Thank you. Thank you, Barrister Omar. First of all, thank you for uh, having having us in this forum today. It's very di it's very diversified, full of um, speakers, and it's really great to know uh, a perspective from different angles on the same topic. And congratulations on uh, the booklet. Thank you very much for that. And lastly, thanks for washing your hands uh, with uh, with ourselves. <laughs> so. Um, Starting with your first question, how important is uh, IP for Unilever? Absolutely important. Globally, uh, we spend more than a billion euro every year on research and development. We've got over 128,000 or more than 128,000 uh, trademarks, more than 20,000 patents and so on. And it's really when you think about the assets, because uh, a lot of uh, the previous speakers, they were also talking about how a piece of art, uh, how, how an idea, these are all part of intellectual property. Uh, and for organizations like Unilever, it's the brands that are the main assets. And, you know, we spend years uh, of time and resources behind building these brands. Uh, it's not only the product that we sell, but also the promise, which ultimately the consumers buy uh, when, when they uh, buy our products. And the biggest problem we face is uh, one of the biggest problems I would mention two here. One is uh, the problem of counterfeit. Uh, that a couple of other speakers have also talked about. Um, and in the end, what happens is, uh, you know, the, 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 all the right laws are probably in place in Bangladesh, but the enforcement is not um, as strong as it should be. Um, so you would spend, or a company like ours, and I think I'm speaking on behalf of all the brands of FMCG, all the good brands from FMCG business. When I say it, we spend years, um, uh, you know, behind R&D, behind uh, developing that reputation. And when, you know, it takes five minutes to develop a counterfeit, which uh, does not deliver the same kind of promises that a brand would do. And in the end, uh, the, the person who would suffer the most is the consumer. So uh, as a marketeer, it's our main, uh, our job is to serve the consumers and it's the consumers who suffer the most. Um, and uh, there has been conversation about awareness. Ms. Uh, Ms. Rai also talked about awareness. And uh, there's so, la you know, we, we always say that our lives in Unilever, we revolve around, our lives revolves around soaps and shampoos, but not our consumers. So they don't pay that, that much of attention. So really we need to devise, uh, you know, the more conversation there are about counterfeit products, uh, the, the better it would be uh, in terms of uh, tackling this issue, but also we need stricter law enforcement. The second point is that of uh, the imported, the, Ill, the illegal imports that happen. And we sometimes call it the baggage party or, you know, the, the, uh, the ones that are imported through different gray channels. Uh, not only the government of Bangladesh is deprived, deprived, deprived of the, the revenues from these products, they are also not compliant to the reg you know, the local laws, the BSTI regulations, etc. Um, and our consumers, for, for 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 whatever reason, they do have a, you know, they do get a lot of, a lot of motivation in buying important products when whenever they see uh, just the country of origin on the background without fully checking uh, whether these are for real or not. And again, first of all, it hurts the consumers the most because if it's not stored properly, even if it's sourced from the uh, the right channels uh, in, in the entire supply chain, the right method is not maintained. Uh, in the end, the product can't deliver of its promised quality. And in the end, it would be harmful for your skin if you eat it for you uh, and for, for your uh, overall well-being. So again, we would uh, need, uh, number one, more awareness, but also a lot more uh, enforcement. So that would be, that, that is something to work towards a lot more. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Navela Chabin Khan, uh, for for your uh, very uh, uh, you know resourceful discussion from the practical aspect. You talked about counterfeit products and parallel imports in particular, which which both of which we have strong laws to deal with. But of course, it is the enforcement 
and it is uh, or rather the lack of enforcement which is which is creating the problem for your organization and many other organizations like yours uh, so uh, thank you very much i would like to move to uh, mr said gausal azam shaun uh, who is the managing director of gray advertising bangladesh limited uh, 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 shaun bhai has been dealing with not only branding products but uh, their company and he himself is very uh keen in branding bangladesh uh, also uh, before before the world so with his vast knowledge and experience in dealing with different types of brands of different companies service products and so on and so forth i would rather want to ask you a different questions uh, 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 mr mr shaun uh, which which we have talked about but not in detail we talked about the strategies we talked about the different need of uh, protection Uh, how we are suffering uh, what is the practical situation where is the gap in bangladesh but i would like to know from you how do you see that uh, the ip valuation uh, how do we uh, why and how it is important uh, and why should we actually do the valuation of intellectual property if you can shed some light from your experience uh, mr mr shaun uh, thank you uh, mr omar and firstly you know congratulations to you for the Uh, and the legal counsel for the booklet that you have printed because it's really of utmost importance that uh, you know we have something in in doc in form of document and somebody is taking it seriously because I think that is a whole issue you know what even Navida said or even Nadia said it's it's actually all in that direction where awareness is an issue I think I think uh, just if you go to the core of it I think it's more about the um, understanding of intangible. that's very important in branding especially you know uh, you know product you see that this is a soap but then uh, a lux is different from a life boy or a, any other soap and how it's different is very very intangible the values are very intangible so i think that's where the problem starts people uh, in our our country maybe we still don't understand the value of intangible so intangibility the value of intangible will always actually be very very elusive and till 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 the time we don't ha- actually have a process to really value it it will it will remain elusive and it will remain very confusing and very um uh very uh, very uh, untouchable so so i think it's extremely important that we value it and and we know that how especially in brand valuation how people have uh you know suffered and people have really tried so many ways and still it's it's not really very uh there's no standard method for that yet uh, so so that that work is extremely important but to begin with i think for our country the concept of right the concept of intellectual property the concept of intangibles these are extremely important for us to realize uh, almas bhai talked about the software brands or the you know technology brands and our local uh, young younger population our young minds the start of minds uh, mr tahari naman has talked about it how they're doing such beautiful brilliant jobs intelligent people young a lot but they don't know how to really uh, value it or how to really protect it so one you know one one thing is very clear from the from everybody's discussion that actually people don't know where to go because very clear that i i won't know or a person who's just very busy in developing a technology or de- developing a kind of a solution for a consumer pro- issues or or a society he will not know how to how to really protect it so and, and that's very and nobody everybody is not unilever everybody is not a, a record bank kiser or a bat to really who has a you know legal uh, advisor like you or anyone else for that matter the, but but then where to go this, where those people will go especially the local brands you know the people who are creating very interesting differentiated product which is very different from anyone else and he doesn't know how to protect his technology of production he doesn't know how to protect the intangible value of the brand as well so i think it's also very important that we create those uh, uh, units who actually can where people can easily go and can understand the value of it so at one end it's extremely important that we uh, we find out the ways to value it second we also it's important to create the clarity on uh, intellectual property the the uh, the clarity on um uh, clarity on inter- in, on uh, uh, ip but also it's important that we create uh, you know organization institute or uh, bodies who can actually support people when they're in trouble with those kind of problems so i think i think those are very very important and also i think uh, uh, you know uh, 
a lot of time we don't realize that uh, that actually this can uh, also make a lot of sense for business it also can make a lot of sense for uh, uh, how how do we really make our business bigger you'll see that uh, from our part of the world the the whole idea of multinational that we say when we talk about unilever when we talk about telenor when we talk about uh, all those multinational brands how do we say they are multinational brands meaning a brand which has been created in london or created in new york they are now global uh, and, and they are not like you know they, that any individual is controlling the whole organization how they are really spreading the business all across the world and maintaining that business uh, uh, you know business uh, uh, business size and business volume and then increasing those i think there also this whole understanding of ip and learning about it is extremely important the the process to maintain those you know as as mrs manjura i said that you know how western union is invested a lot of money for their internal people to understand the value of intangible value of brand and how they all own it so much that they know so i don't think that those kind of practices also exist in our local brand or local organizations where it's extremely important that we practice that or we we actually introduce those kind of practices so i think it's all together the whole idea here for example the people who are sitting here is to really creating something out of which we can actually spread the education spread the whole idea of how to really do it the process the uh, and, and the other support system as well so i think it's it's a it's a it's a discussion where we somebody said that you know how uh, it's so difficult to get a uh, you know a patent been done and it takes it takes it takes it takes years so so it's also at times i'm sure you know and you can tell us about it that how you know for a lot of japanese brand it's also a kind of a stumbling block to see that they're not getting patented here and they don't and, and they're not very really sure about whether they should come to bangladesh or not only because of that even that is possible so it's all together i think it's very important that we deal with this matter we take it seriously and we give a clarity to it that how this whole intangible value can be translated into tangibility and make people understand more about it in our legal system in our government system in our business community and in our startup community everywhere this spread of that knowledge spread of that conceptual clarity will be very very key thank you so much uh thank you very much mr uh, sayed uh, gasul alam shaun uh, for your uh, interesting discussion uh we 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 get some insight from you as you are dealing with a lot of brands and i think these are of course very important thing so with the whole discussion uh it came out that uh, at this moment in a country like ours possibly creating the right awareness uh, and the right mindset maybe one of the first and very important key issues to start with uh i i do not see her excellency uh in the in the forum at this moment she she informed me over text that she is experiencing technical problem and she is getting out of this broadcasting in every 2 minutes and she has been rejoining so by the time she rejoins if she can uh if i may ask you uh each of you i will i will i'll invite one by one uh, just to make a, a one liner statement of your action plan what you want to do uh as 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 the office bearer that you are bearing the office in this year so that if we meet uh, in a forum uh says in a similar forum in 2022 uh next year uh, we can say that we have done uh this uh in our forum uh, to 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 actually facilitate the ipr in bangladesh so i would actually and of course you know, feel free to make a promise because a promise in a webinar is not a legally binding promise but so we can think big we can think high and we can think out of the box so i will start with mr uh, almas kabir if you can uh, make a, a statement that uh, that is your plan of action for 2021 in terms of ipr thank you once again uh, as I mentioned uh, previously, that um, awareness is the most important thing, and many speakers have also reiterated that. So uh, we will continue uh, make our um, the people in the ICT industry uh, aware, or uh, rather, more aware of their uh, of the IP um, rights. 
the IP, uh, the necessity of the of uh, copywriting, uh, the necessity of uh, having the trademark or the service part. And I believe if we can do that successfully, um, we can protect the, the, uh, the intellectual property. And also, uh, we would love to have um, meetings, uh, several meetings actually, with the uh, Ministry of Commerce and Ministry of Cultural Affairs, where we need to make a certain amendments so that uh, they can, the, the existing laws can be uh, aligned with the new technologies, uh, especially um, uh, many IT enabled services, which are not addressed uh, in the current laws. So that has to be done. Uh, I believe that will actually take us a long way um, if we can uh, do that, con convince the government of doing that. Thank you. Thank you very much. So moving to uh, Ms. Nadia Samdani, the same question. Um, thank you. I think um, I would spread awareness by um, really focusing on code of honor. I think that is like the first step. You know, if we have a code of honor and we start respecting um, individuals' um, intellectual property, I think that is a start because, you know, we all know once we go into uh, a legal battle, you know, if there's a big person and, and there's a small artist, you know, it's never ending. So I think we should be considerate, we should respect and be aware that, you know, code of honor is very important. You know, we just cannot take someone's property and claim it's ours or use it without any, um, you know, without, you know, giving any credit or some kind of courtesy. So I think I would begin with, um, you know, building awareness with code of honor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nadia. So moving to uh, Ms. Uh, Monju and Rai, again with the same question maybe from an organizational perspective? Um, surely. You know, what I believe is that we would be very happy to provide thought leadership and uh, to SMEs, especially Bangladesh, I know, has a, a, bar, a huge uh, number of SMEs who are in various areas and who have global aspirations, who want to connect with uh, partners outside of Bangladesh who want to build their businesses. And I think we would be happy to provide thought leadership to those businesses and how they can how they can use their IPR and how they can spread their wings. Thank you. Thank you very much, Manju. Uh, moving to Andosan. Uh, thank you very much, Marisan. Uh, I'd like to uh, keep the discussions uh, with uh, the Japanese companies, and uh, I'd like to find out uh, some specific issues on IPR rather than general issues. And uh, I'd like to raise the, those issues uh, to the government uh, of Bangladesh, and we have the platform uh, between the uh, Japanese government and Bangladesh government. So I hope that we can, I, I can report the, the, the the pro progress of discussion the, at the same day uh, of next year. And uh, uh, in this regard, uh, the, the support from the old discussions uh, are really appreciate, appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andersan. Uh, to uh, Mr. Tari Naman. Thank you, Barrister Omar. Uh, you know, as a chamber, our one of our major goals is to bring in Nordic companies uh, who are not in Bangladesh at the moment, but bring them into Bangladesh and uh, uh, it, you know encourage them to start their operations. So I think to start off, I, I do agree with our uh, panelists that uh, awareness is very much needed, but I would also like to emphasize that uh, for our Nordic companies who are not in Bangladesh, we would like to build a trust on them, uh, make them understand that the laws are there to protect their intangible or intellectual properties. And if there is an infringement, infringement, we would know exactly where to go and how to handle it. So the laws are there. It does take long to go about it when there's a there's a, a breach, but the laws are there. So we have to kind of let them know and make them aware that it is available and you should come, you should invest and you should grow in Bangladesh as well. And I, I strongly feel that the booklet is going to be a very good guideline for many companies and the chambers uh, as well to help out the members, you know, show them a direction where to go uh, and, you know, and grow in Bangladesh. Thank you very much. Uh, now moving to uh, Ms. Nabila Jabin Khan. 
Yes, uh, so one would be continuing what we're already doing right now from Unilever, working with all the relevant government organizations closely and supporting them when needed so that the enforcement on behalf of the, uh, on us and other FMCG companies as well, enforcement can take place. Uh, a lot has been already spoken about awareness. Uh, I would just talk about awareness from a consumer perspective again. Uh, because Unilever, uh, because of the size of it, we've got that capacity to create a huge amount of awareness uh, about it without uh, making anyone panic or without fear mongering. So that's a thin line and that's something we need to keep working towards um, so that our consumers don't lose out in the end. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Nabila. Uh, our, our last speaker of the day, uh, Mr. Gasol Alam Shan. You have to uh, unmute. Yeah, sorry, sorry for that. Uh, I'll just give a small example to really end the discussion and uh, may take a bit more time than uh, what you're expecting, but then I, I think I should say this. You know, when COVID came, uh, COVID, the whole COVID spread happened, and the two words were very important. One is, uh, you know, the social distancing, uh, which we call in Bangla, shamajik durutto, you know? And, and, and we, we, when we talked about it, I realized that semantics sometimes are extremely important. This whole idea of social distancing is so Western and so elitist, which doesn't take consider, consider the condition of Bangladesh at all, where in a small land, 18 crore people lived. So I think, I think sometimes the semantics are very important for people to understand. When you go to a local guy, local businessman, and tell him about brands, to him, spending behind brand looks like a extra expense, and there is no return for your uh, investment. It's just because the whole idea of branding is so westernized to many of us. Just like IP, intellectual property, this language needs to be uh, needs to make sense in local context for the legal system, for people who are in business, the startups, the very SME, the Manju. Again and again, mention about SMEs. SMEs don't understand this whole language of IP uh, or brand. They don't understand that. So, what is it actually which makes sense to you when you speak about it? So, I think all we are, we are speaking in English will not work. For example, for, for example, right? So, I think there there's a huge job to be done, and I like to really take up that job. That will be oh, my uh, bigger issue. I always thought semantics is a huge issue. People don't understand many times what we're talking about even. But we think they are all, they should understand, but they don't. The language is very important and how you replace it to them. What is the value of a brand to them really? What does it mean when you say brand? You know, so Shamajik Durutta Judyachke or social distancing, we say that stay three feet away, maybe a better idea than say social distancing. So, so, so it's a larger discussion, of course, but I think there is a huge value to that discussion that how to you place those two the lo in the local context, local businessman, local startup, consumer, legal system, government machineries, bureaucracies, everywhere. That language will be a very, very big issue, I think. So I'd like to work on that. Yeah. Right. Uh, thank you so much, Shanvai. That's, that's a very nice uh, uh, way of uh, thinking about it. So uh, uh, we, we are almost coming to the end of uh, this uh, uh, lucid and vivid discussion session. And I would like to invite uh, our development partner, Barrister Mushfiq Imriz Vibhai, to actually uh, say a vote of thanks. From my side, uh, I would like to uh, thank you all the viewers and the, the, the speakers for your valuable time and, and participation. And I hope that we will actually take it forward from, from here. It will not be the end. It will be the starting of our discussion. So from my side, uh, uh, thank you very much. I would like to. Uh, request uh, by to formally uh, uh, conclude the session. Rizvai to you. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> hello, everyone. Good afternoon from Dhaka. Uh, my name is Mashwit Rizvi. I'm a partner development of Legal Council. Um, I'll keep this brief. It's been a very informative and useful discussion. Um, I'd like to firstly thank all the esteemed panelists for contributing to this um, uh, webinar and launching of the IP um, booklet by Legal Counsel, uh, especially to uh, Her Excellency Ms. Peterson for officially launching the booklet. I would like to thank um, the people of the chambers who have created this booklet, and in particular, Barrister Atmaja Bhattacharji and Barrister uh, Tanimisha Saira Khan. 
I would like to take this opportunity to thank the designer of the booklet, uh, Mr. Ripon uh, from um, ArtCon. And as we all can agree, uh, the driving force for growth, the major driving force for growth for legal firms in Bangladesh will be this uh, intellectual property sphere. And uh, I would hope that all the relevant stakeholders, especially businesses, uh, local brand owners and startups, uh, take this opportunity um, to uh, protect their intellectual property assets and to exercise their intellectual property rights uh, whenever they can, uh, both in the physical economy and the uh, very quickly growing digital economy. Uh, with this last word, I would like to conclude uh, this event and thank you all once again for participating at this uh, launching of the IP book, uh, booklet by Lili. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very bye. much. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Thank you. Yeah. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yeah.